in our discussion. In our discussion on nuclear fusion reactions, we said that these types of reactions release a great amount of energy. So basically, we take two nuclei, combine the nuclei to form a more stable nuclei, and that releases a certain amount of energy. Now, since nuclear fusion reactions release a great amount of energy, we might imagine that one application of nuclear fusion reactions would be to build a nuclear reactor that is able to capture some of this energy that is released in any nuclear fusion reactions and we can somehow use this energy to do useful work. Now before we discuss nuclear fusion reactors and the difficulties in building such a reactor, let's look at the following example in which we're going to determine the amount of energy that is released in one particular nuclear fusion reaction. Now one promising type of nuclear fusion reaction is that of deuterium. So if we take two deuterium atoms, we can produce a tritium atom as well as a single hydrogen atom releasing a certain amount of energy. So basically we want to calculate how much energy is released in a single nuclear fusion reaction shown in the following section. <coughs> So let's begin by calculating what the change in mass is as we go from the reactant side to the product side. So as we go from these two deuterium atoms to a single tritium and hydrogen. Now recall that the mass of a single deuterium is given by 2.014082 unified atomic mass units. The mass of tritium is 3.061604. 49 unified atomic mass units and the mass of our hydrogen is 1.007825 unified atomic mass units. So we take the mass of the reactants and subtract the mass of the product and we get a decrease in mass of about 0.00429 unified atomic mass units. So as we go from the reactant to the product, there is a decrease decrease in mass given by this quantity and so energy must be released. Some of that mass is transformed into energy. Now what quantity of energy does this decrease in mass correspond to? Well to calculate that we have to use the rest mass energy equation. So E is equal to the delta M, the change in mass in kilograms, multiplied by the speed of light in a vacuum squared. So we take this multiplied by the conversion factor of 1.6605 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms in one unified atomic mass units and we multiply that by the square of the speed of light in the vacuum and we get this quantity in joules and this is approximately equal to 4.0 mega electron volts. So this is a relatively high amount of energy that that is released when we fuse these two deuterium atoms to form the tritium as well as our hydrogen. Now, as I mentioned earlier, deuterium is a very promising fuel, a very promising source for nuclear fusion reactors because it is found in great quantities or relatively great quantities in water. However, there do exist several important difficulties that must be overcome in actually producing a nuclear fusion reactor. In fact, because of these difficulties, no, no known fusion reactor actually exists on Earth. So let's actually examine these two types of difficulties. So the first difficulty is basically overcoming the electric repulsive forces that exist when we try to bring our nuclei together to fuse them. In other words, these two deuterium atoms contain 
protons in the nucleus and when we try to bring these nuclei together those two protons will basically repel one another and as we bring them closer the electric repulsive forces increases so that means to actually bring our two nuclei close enough for the strong nuclear forces to actually take into place and bring and combine those two nuclei to form our tritium releasing our hydrogen we have to have a high enough energy so these two H these two deuterium atoms must have a high enough kinetic energy that means for the kinetic energy to be high enough we have to have a high enough temperature so a high enough temperature is required to actually create that fusion reaction to actually bring our two atoms close enough overcoming the electric repulsive forces and our strong nuclear forces based basically combine those two atoms. So in order for fusion reactions to actually take place, nuclei must be brought sufficiently close to one another so that the strong and weak nuclear forces can combine our nuclei. However, to bring the nuclei close, the electric repulsive forces due to the protons in the nuclei, the positive charge of those protons must be overcome and this requires a great amount of energy in itself. Now, for nuclei to get close enough to take place, for fusion to take place, they must have a great enough kinetic energy. And that means because kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature, the temperature inside the nuclear fusion reactor must be high enough. Indeed, if we examine the sun, the sun is essentially, the sun is essentially a nuclear fusion reactor in itself. And that's because it has a high enough temperature and that high enough temperature allows our atoms to actually get close enough for fusion to take place and for the strong nuclear forces to actually combine those nuclei fusing our nuclei and releasing a great amount of energy. So, indeed the sun is a fusion reactor as it contains a high enough temperature that leads to self-sustaining fusion reaction. Now, what other difficulty exists in actually creating a nuclear fusion reactor on Earth? So, the second type of difficulty is basically placing enough of these nuclei into the reactor for our collision rate to be high enough. So besides a high temperature, nuclear fusion reactors must contain a high density of reactants, a high density of fuel. For example, in this case, the concentration of deuterium inside the reactor must be high enough to make sure that there is sufficiently high collision rate and a sufficiently high production of energy. So basically, two difficulties exist. We have the high temperature that must be obtained inside the nuclear fusion reactor and there must be a very high density of our fuel. Now, what exactly can we conclude about what we just discussed? So although nuclear fusion reactors would be a very promising source of usable energy, our fuel fusion reactors are very difficult to actually create and sustain and that's because of these two difficulties. So a nuclear fusion reactor would need to sustain fusion for long enough to actually produce usable amount of energy. However, most materials, most solid objects that we have on earth vaporize at these high temperatures and so we can't actually actually create the compartment, the metal or solid compartment that holds the, the, uh, these fusion reactors that are found at very high temperatures because the actual material vaporizes.
So the sun, however, contains this very high density of nuclei at very high temperatures. So we have a self-sustaining continual fusion reactor that releases a great amount of energy into the surrounding space and some of that energy eventually reaches the earth and that powers the different types of processes that take place on earth. For example, it powers the process that takes place inside plants known as photosynthesis. So plants are able to convert carbon dioxide and uh, water or 